<laughs> okay. So I um, guess I'll begin. Um, introduction to mobile app development with, with Android. <laughs> um, right. So, turns out mobile is pretty popular. Um, mobile usage has overtaken desktop usage in quite a few countries now, um, including India, South, South Africa, and Saudi Arabia. So half of YouTube views are now on mobile devices. We're now connected. We're, we're now the most connected anytime, anywhere. So what is Android? So Android is a Linux-based operating system intended for mobile devices. Um, Android operating system versions are named in alphabetical order and after desserts. So we've got Cupcake. <coughs> for some reason, it started at C. Not really sure what happened to A, a and B. <laughs> um, but Cupcake, Donut, Eclair, Froyo, Gingerbread, Honeycomb, uh, Ice Cream Sandwich, Jelly Bean, Kit Kat, uh, Lollipop, and now they've just released Android M. So uh, that was announced in Google I.O. a couple of months, oh, like a month ago. Um, so we don't really know what it stands for, but it's going to be released in September, rumoured. Um, I think it's going to be called Macadamia Nut Cookie or something. Um, but yeah, I guess we'll see. <laughs> so <coughs> Google Play is a marketplace where basically um, it hosts all the apps everywhere, um, makes all the apps publicly available. Um, when you develop an app, you can upload it to the Google Play Store. Um, so yeah, there are one and a half million apps in the Google Play Store currently, probably increased since then, maybe closer to two million now, I don't know. Um, 200,000 of those are paid. And there are more Google Play Store apps um, available than um, apps on the Apple Play St uh, App Store. So just some statistics. So in 2008, there were 3,000 apps. Jump to 2012, half a million. Uh, in 2013, there were 850,000 of them. Um, so that was uh, users were downloading 800 apps per second, 2 billion apps per month. Um, so it's kind of crazy. Um, last year, there were 1.2 million. Uh, yeah, so developers earn quite a bit of cold hard cash from apps. Um, yeah, 10 billion of that was earned in last year alone. So, I don't really these are the uh, top categories for Google Play Store. Um, so the purple, uh, sorry, the red are all the free apps and the green are paid. So what is that? Most people pay for personalized personalization apps. Yeah. Okay, so when we get around to Android development, basically, there are a few components. There's the IDE, the Integrated Development Environment, Android SDK, Android Software Development Kit, the ADB, Android Debug Bridge, and the Android Runtime. So an IDE is an application that provides the facilities to programmers for application development. So basically, it's just an environment where you can write code and compile it and basically deploy it onto your application. So that is, um, so we'll be using Android Studio. We can also use Eclipse. So Eclipse is usually used when you write Java applications. So the Android SDK basically contains the tools to create, compile, debug, and package Android apps. Basically provides all the functionality for you to develop everything, really. Um, and then we come across to the ADB. So basically, it provides, the ADB kind of provides like this software bridge for you to deploy 
um, applications from your laptop to your phone. So it essentially acts as yeah, a bridge. Right, so the Android runtime. Um, don't worry too much about this. Um, I guess I'm getting into finer details here. Um, but basically, the Android runtime uses ahead of time compilation. So when you deploy your application on an Android device, the Java code is translated into machine code. What this results in is larger compilation code, uh, fast e but faster execution and improved battery life. Basically, um, and it's kind of, <laughs> I'm trying to think of simple ways to put this. Um, <coughs> yeah, just don't, don't worry too much about that. We can come back to that. Um, also, don't worry too much about this. Um, so basically, um, Android applications uh, run on Android's own Java virtual machine. So a Java virtual machine basically provides like this level of abstraction where you can um, run applications um, on any sort of environment. So um, the good thing about Java is you can run it on any operating system. That's Linux or um, Apple, uh, iOS or Windows. Um, so providing like this, ab this software abstraction layer kind of provides, uh, allows you to develop Java applications. And they run in this environment instead of, I guess, natively on like your local Android, uh, local operating system, if that makes sense. Um, so the Delvic virtual machine is, op is optimized to operate on mobile devices. Um, at the core of Android, you will have your native C and C++ libraries. So you can actually develop Android applications in C and C++. OK. So developing an Android application. When you're writing Android applications, it's all written in Java, but as I said before, you can actually go down to a finer level of detail and write at them in C and C++. Um, I'm, not from, I'm not sure if, um, yeah. Um, so the, gra the GUI, the, uh, gra uh, graphic, the graphical user interface is all written in XML. Um, basically, when you want to deploy your application, you package it into what's called um, an APK. Um, basically, it's the same as an EXE on Windows. Um, I'm not sure what the equivalent is on iOS. Uh, so yeah, you deploy the, ap the APK file uh, using the ADB tool. So you have really two options when you're testing out um, an Android application. You can either deploy it on a physical device, or you can, if you don't really have one of these, you can um, deploy it on a emulator, so like a virtual device, really. Um, do you guys have any ideas to um, what any pros and cons would be to deploying an application on a virtual on a virtual device? No. <laughs> okay. So basically, um, since everything is all virtual, you can basically specify what Android version your virtual device will be. So you can specify it's um, Jelly Bean or KitKat or Lollipop or any of that sort. You can you can specify all of them, and you can test your application on every single. Android version, so it basically covers all bases and um, really provides like thorough testing. Um, and also, you don't need a physical device to be able to run your applications, so you can do it all from your um, IDE, your integrated development environment, so Android Studio. Um, the cons, so there are certain things that you can't emulate um, using your um, virtual device. You can't emulate the camera, um, and you can't emulate GPS coordinates unless you've got GPS in your PC for some reason. Um, don't know if that's possible. Um, um, also, they're quite slow. Yeah. So 
you've created your application and now you want to publish it to make it publish to make it publicly available. So there are two ways of doing this. You can either um, get the APK file and just give it out to people, so email or USB stick or something. Um, so your APK file was generated each time you kind of compile your application down and um, alternatively you can upload it to the Google Play Store. So what's involved in this is you do a one-time registration and it costs like 25 US dollars. Um, you upload your application and then Google um, scans it and to make sure it's not malware. Um, and then basically a couple of minutes later your application is available on the Google Play Store. So it's super straightforward. Yeah. So that's just an example of um, really the first step of um, uploading your app to the Play Store. Okay, so we can probably get down to coding. Um, I don't know <laughs> how well I really explain things, but um, I, I guess what I've always found is that um, writing the code and then going back and understanding it kind of, um, it's, it's a good and fast way to learn. Um, so I think maybe just getting straight down to it would be a good idea. Um, a few tips. Um, something to note, rather. Um, so coding is pretty logical, but it also requires quite a lot of creativity. So when you're solving bugs and deciding the best way to do things, um, yeah, you kind of need to be creative in that aspect. Um, and yeah, you don't want to learn to code, per se. You want to solve a problem. Yeah, so we should probably get down to starting the tutorial. Yeah, no. <laughs> okay. Um, so I guess I'll come and sit down with you guys, and then we can kind of go from there. Does everyone have um, an Android phone? No. Oh right, that's right. Um, so we've got two spare. Um, so I've got one here. I don't, um, and I'll grab out this. So I can, oh sorry, yeah, pretty. <laughs> um, I guess I'll just go through um, the code. Um, I, went through the, I went through the code um, with a few of you guys, but um, not everyone, so I'll go through it again. Um, so, all right, where to begin? So these import statements here, um, it's basically just saying, hey, I want, I want this functionality inside my application. Um, so we've got an activity, um, we've got um, our edit text, our buttons, and toast, which is, toast is displaying um, text to the screen, um, just like notification um, text. So down here you'll see please enter a valid number, so that's all toast. It's a little bit of a strange name. Um, so um, we've got an edit text here. So the edit, edit, the edit text field is where the user is entering um, all the, uh, the numbers um, to input to be used for conversion. Um, so as it stands like right here, um, it's it's just kind of on its own, it's not really doing anything. So what we want to do is we want to link it to the actual control. Um, so this is where we're linking it to the actual control here. Um, so we're saying get the ID of this control, the edit text. So this ID will be defined in your activity main file. It will be called edit text and it's just assigning um, this control to our edit text variable here. So when we click the button for conversion, the calculate button, um, we specified um, in the activity main file on the button control, um, we said onclick equals onclick. So we're saying 
we want this onClick method to be run whenever the button is, has been clicked. So right here we're just getting the ID of the control and we're saying if this is the button that has been clicked, so we're just, yeah, we're getting the IDs again just as we did for the edit text and storing them in these um, variables here. Um, so what this is saying is if the user hasn't entered any text, then display a message, please enter a valid number. Um, so we're getting the length of the field, so if that's zero, meaning, yeah, if there's nothing entered. And then finish, come out of the, um, come out of the switch statement uh, if that is the case, so do not go and complete this. So if there's no, um, if there's nothing entered, then this isn't run. All right. <coughs> so for okay. So now we're moving on to obtaining the text from the edit text. So we're getting the text again and we're converting that to a string. So um, since we want to, well, as it stands, it's currently a string anyway, so I don't think we need that. No, I think that should work, actually. No, OK, we need that. <laughs> um, so we're passing the string um, that's returned from uh, this, the text um, into a float. So a float is just um, a bunch of numbers, really. Um, and here we're saying if the Celsius button is checked, so the radio button, call the converter util method, uh, sorry, class, call the convert Fahrenheit to Celsius method of the converter util class and pass it the value that the user entered. And then it's just setting whatever is returned from that method is displayed onto the text field. And down here, it's just removing the check from the Celsius button and putting that straight away, um, checking the Fahrenheit button, a uh, radio button. And then down here, we're just doing the exact same thing um, as we did for Celsius, but for Fahrenheit. And instead of um, converting Fahrenheit to Celsius, we're converting Celsius to Fahrenheit and using the input text, using the text of the user input. Um, so that was that. Um, okay. Um, I'm in presentation mode. I don't know how to get out of here. <laughs> um, um, I'll view. Here we go. All right. So now if we go into... We've got our Android manifest. Okay, so our converter util class. Um, basically, this is just um, providing the functionality to do the calculations for the Fahrenheit to Celsius um, conversion and the Celsius to Fahrenheit conversion right here. Oh, right, yeah. Okay. Right here. See, so you're just doing the calculations and then returning that value back to um, whoever has called this method. Uh, yep. Um, yeah. Yes, you can. <laughs> um, I think when you're when you're you can pass that sort of um, stuff. Um, yes, you can do that. Uh. Oh. Um. All right. So. If we just go into 
Activity main. Okay. So here, so a linear layout is basically, <coughs> it provides you, um, I guess, functionality to um, or how your controls will look and, uh, and are aligned. So we've got a vertical, the states that our linear layout is vertical, meaning um, controls are underneath each other. You can have a, um, a horizontal um, orientation, meaning controls are aligned next to each other. Um, so this is just a bunch of alignment. Um, it's all automatic usually when you drag this out, but you can edit it so you can say, you can specify uh, the layout width of like 100 um, display pixels if you want to. Um, and then that will obviously change how things look in the design. So that's all cut off. So let's just put that back to match parent. Uh, right, so we then, we then added an edit text for um, a user to enter, enter all the numbers. Um, so we're specifying the input type um, to really, yeah, number signed and number decimal. So just numbers. Um, the alternative would be, um, or if I remove this, um, you would just get a normal keyboard layout of text. So you can also specify that it's a password, a text password. Oh. And then that would, if I go back into the normal view, um, Whenever, this, whenever, whenever I use the enters um, inside this text field now, you'll see it come up as like a bunch of like dots, um, just like when you enter in a normal password, I guess. All right. <coughs> um, so we added a oh, we added a radio group here. Um, so we're just grouping together a bunch of radio buttons. So we've got two radio buttons here and we're just grouping them together. Um, one's for Celsius and one's for Fahrenheit. Um, radio button is either, um, basically if you have four radio buttons, only one can be checked, um, as opposed to say a, a bunch of check boxes where you can um, check multiple, yeah. And then down here we've got a button, so whenever this is clicked, we call the onClick method. Um, yep. Uh, I guess it's worth mentioning. So over here. Um, so this is our menu um, XML file. So this just basically states um, what our menu is going to look like on, on the app. Um, so right now we're um, telling it to give it this name, um, action settings, and you will see it's referring to a string resource. So if we go back into our strings under resources, you will see that you will see the settings here. So strings is just like a central place where you define all your text. <coughs> so we've got our hello world, our settings, two Celsius. Um, yeah, these are what our radio buttons are called and this is what our button is called. And I guess that's essentially all the files that, I guess, we're concerned about. <laughs> um, oh, we've got the Android manifest. Yeah. So this is an important one. 
Okay. So an Andrew manifest is basically a, a place where we can define all of our permissions, we can define <coughs> the icon, the theme, um, all of our activities that we'll be using. <coughs> so all of our activities need to be explicitly stated um, inside the manifest file. <coughs> um, here we're saying um, to refer to the drawable um, folder and XCC logo um, and put that as our icon. So this is our app name right here. And yep. That's the gist of it, really. Does that make sense <laughs> for the most part? float um, so a float really takes up more space than an integer like um, if you're using um, decimal points then you'd use a float because an integer it rounds up or rounds down um, since we're we, we're concerned about accuracy with conversion we want like the decimal point um, the float displays um, yeah, decimal points up to um, however you um, define it. I guess right now it's maybe f to four points or something. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, can you repeat what was the manifest file? Um, right, so the manifest file is basically <coughs> it defines where all your, uh, it defines all your activities. Um, it defines your icon, uh, your theme, um, I think I had put up a description down here in manifest. Yeah. So <coughs> the manifest, yeah, it needs to know all the components that are existing. So you need to explicitly state all the activities inside the manifest file. Um, <coughs> yeah, you can define your user permissions. So, if your app needs to log in, uh, if your app, if your app needs to access the internet, if it needs to access like read write access to the file, uh, to file, um, if it needs to access Bluetooth, all that sort of stuff, you would explicitly state that in the Android manifest file because um, you don't really want to give um, a developer like all the permissions. Um, so, basically, when you define uh, these permissions inside the Android manifest file. Um, <coughs> when you go to download an app from the Google Play Store, it'll say, hey, this app wants to access your file, this app wants to access Bluetooth, and then you would say, okay, that's fine, and you would install it. So that all comes from the Android manifest. Yeah, yeah. So, um, if you want like up to date um, currency um, conversions, um, so you'd have to have. I mean, I'm sure there's like a web API for this, like web functionality that you can call into, which returns you say the um, like <coughs> the currency conversion data that you need to accurately convert currency. Um, um, so I'm, I would say you'd call into a web API for that and then be returned like up-to-date currency information and then use that to convert your data. Yeah. Otherwise, you would have to explicitly state it in, into your app and say maybe each time you open your app, it would prompt you to say update the latest um, currencies. Yeah.
Um, yep. Um, so <coughs> Android development primarily uses Java. So I think maybe a good, like, before maybe getting started with mobile, you can probably learn Java. Um, I think that provides kind of the fundamental um, aspects of um, getting things to work. Um, and then on top of Java, you'll have like the Android API. So you'll have like the Android or the Android functionality um, on top of existing Java functionality. Um, I would not say you can't get straight away stuck into Android. I think that's like, that's awesome. <laughs> um, I, I don't know, like it, it helps to understand Java concepts, but you can do that when you're um, getting started in Android here. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I would recommend just going to the Android developer site. And um, they have like, yeah, I can see you've got it up. They have a lot of resources there and they're really good. Um, they have um, the API list, so all the functionality ever in Android is all stated on the website. Um, and there are just endless tutorials online, yeah. Yeah, no, it's definitely possible to have one build, but there are, so I know that you can do that with, say, Ruby. You can build an application in Ruby and deploy it down to um, Java code and Objective-C code for iOS. Um, so you only need to maintain one set of code. Um, I think the issue with that um, is that you kind of have to wait for this you'd have to wait for this like certain application to support the native features of each phone and also it's slower um, and it's uh, prone to vulnerabilities. Um, so yeah. <laughs> right. Is it the Ruby one? Yeah. yeah. There's also there's an alternative as well um, where you develop in C Sharp. Um, I can't remember what that's called. But there's, an, there's another C Sharp one we can develop in C Sharp, another programming language, and then deploy that down to Android phones, iOS phones, and even Windows phones. Yeah. So you can build a different platform to that, right? Yeah, a different platform, yeah. You'd need, yeah. Sorry, I think you might have covered this. How do you make sure that the app is, uh, the Android app is uh, usable across all the different? Right, yeah. Yeah, so no. Um, so we can use um, virtual devices for that. We can emulate like different environments. Um, we can explicitly state, hey, I, I want to test, um, I want to use this specific Android version and then run your app on that and then try others. Um, there's actually an, there's an online application. I'm not, I can't remember what it's called, but you can upload your application to it and it tests every Android version or like whatever you state between say 2.0 to 5.0 version say. Um, there's a tool for that, <laughs> there's an app for that. Um, um, and I know there's also this feature called Monkey in Android um, where it like randomly generates user input and like, like a user like randomly pushing buttons and entering random data into things to try and break your code so you make it um, more robust. Um, that's called Monkey. Uh, it's part of Android. Um, but yeah, I think yeah, I'll have to I have to get back to you with the name of the application that we upload your file. We upload your um, a uh, Android application that tests it all because um, that's really handy. Yeah. Yeah, um, so I think this usually, um, whenever you create like um, a skeleton, uh, like a new project like we have, there's a... Um, sorry? 
Oh, yeah, this one here. Yeah. So it usually comes with like another class for you to test things. Um, I've never done it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know how popular that is. Um, I guess I think um, the monkey um, feature that I was talking about just before, I think that would be really useful. Um, but yeah, I think you, you can automate tests. You just need to, I guess, look into it. Sorry? You know, like most apps, they have like illustration, pictures, right. animation. Yeah, okay. Um, so there are, if it's going to design, um, there, say for an image, there's um, an image view, and you can just drag that across um, and have an image there. Um, you can either you can start what's called an, an intent to do something, an intent to um, allow the user to pick an image from the gallery and then load the image up into the image view. Um, you can also explicitly like have a static image and put that into your drawable um, resources folder <coughs> and load that up, say, on create. Um, so there are there yeah there there are different media that you can use. I think there's um a video there's a video view as well, right here, that you can use for video. And then there's also called a surface view that you can drag across. So it's used for video as well. Yeah. Yeah, 25 US. Yeah. Um, I think, okay, so I believe, I'm not really sure on the commission that, say, Google, Google would get from your app. Um, I, I don't think so. Um, I know that, um, so there are two different ways for users to pay for an app. Um, there's, you can, before a user downloads, you can get them to pay for it, so like a couple of dollars, for example. Um, but then you can make it freely available but have in-app purchasing. So I think that one's more preferred because users are more likely to kind of spend money. Um, <laughs> um, <coughs> I'm not too sure on the commission. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so you can, um, so basically an activity represents like a single page. So you can create more activities. Um, again, to get to another activity, another, another page, you, can, you start an intent. Um, you, um, <coughs> you can also have um, what's called fragments, which is like, um, it's, not an entire, it's, not, it's not an entirely new screen, it's just like an overlay on top of a screen that you can use. Um, for different um, screens and stuff. Um, so yeah, activities and fragments in terms of displaying new UI. And the service called the front page, like the menu, you can use that as well. Yeah, you can use, you can use that, yeah.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, I've got I've got business cards. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You if you're interested. Cool. Yep. Thank you so much, guys.